It's a privilege to be here and talk about the metabolic challenges that the brain is facing and, and the potential solutions that we might be able to envisage together as, a, as an integrated network, as, as Lillian was referring to. I'd like to start by giving you the perspective that brought me into uh, this field. Uh, I work in, in, in brain aging uh, and have done for about 20 years, but this slide gives me the sort of physiological foundation for the therapeutic approaches that we're taking. It's in the infant brain that ketones are an essential fuel. They supply about 30% of the brain's energy requirements in newborns. The second point is that they are responsible for generating the lipids in the brain. So the myelin, when we think about the integrity of signal transmission, ketones are essential to, to actually build that myelination. And they're produced in the body from fats, as they are in adults, but also they're supplied by medium-chain triglycerides in mother's milk. So that is the reason we started working with medium-chain triglyceride uh, for the intervention that I want to tell you about. We've looked at what we call KMCT because medium-chain triglycerides, some are ketogenic, um, like the 8 and 10 carbon ones, but the 12 and 14s may be bioactive, but they are not ketogenic. So I abbreviate this as KMCT. And what we see uh, with KMCT, it's been known for quite some time that they, that they, they are ketogenic. Um, and what we developed is a, an imaging method which you can see on the right-hand panel using uh, acetoacetate as the ketone tracer. And you can see that on the, on the left-hand panel of that black uh, box, uh, clearly the brain lights up when you have the participant in a scanner and you infuse the acetoacetate. So we have a signal of ketone uptake in the brain. In this case, it was a comparison with a placebo treatment in mild cognitive impairment. And you can see that the placebo did not change the uh, uptake of, of acetoacetate in the brain. The context for this, of course, is that the, the medium chain triglycerides, like other ketogenic supplements, have a transitory effect on ketosis, as shown on the panel on the left. What we didn't know when we started this study uh, with 30, uh, 30 grams per day in our randomized control trial is whether over six months you could sustain a ketogenic stimulation of ketones, uh, which in fact we, we, we did observe, whereas there was no effect of the placebo. The bottom line in this uh, project is that not only can we achieve uh, brain energy rescue with ketones, with MCT, but here you have three panels showing that three of the main cognitive domains are improved, the, the blue box versus the green box in each, in each of these panels for episodic memory, for executive function, and for language. Now the title says that the, the improvement was in five domains, and I'll explain that uh, in, in just a moment, what, what's happening with the other two. So this uh, is showing that we're seeing a cognitive benefit in MCI, 30 grams of MCT. It's not a very powerful ketogenic supplement. Given for six months, 80% compliance, and we see uh, these significant improvements. In terms of mechanism, I think it's instructive to be able to point out that in these same areas uh, of cognition, we see a significant positive relationship with both plasma ketones and brain ketone uptake. I'm only showing the plasma here because most people don't have access to brain ketone PET, but you can essentially get the same information. The plasma beta-hydroxybutyrate is an excellent proxy for the brain uptake because the relationship is linear over a very large uh, biological range. So we see a mechanistic link. There's obviously an overlap between the placebo values here and the KMCT. We didn't know when we started this trial in 2015 the extent to which we could raise the, the plasma ketones. Um, so clearly a, either a more ketogenic supplement, perhaps a ketogenic diet, or a higher dose of KMCT would probably help separate the blue bot dots from the green ones. Um, but still, um, there's, there's a, a direct relationship between the plasma ketones and, and cognition. So this is the methodology that involved MRI, diffusion imaging, and what we see uh, regarding the fourth cognitive domain, which is, you can see these white matter tracks on the, on the right, um, and they're listed, the uncinate, inferior longitudinal fasciculus, and, and so on. These white matter tracks 
are seen with diffusion imaging and we can actually see the ketone uptake in these individual tracks by combining the ketone PET with the diffusion imaging. And when we look at the uptake of ketones in these white matter tracks, there's a very strong positive correlation with processing speed, which suggests that we've got a, a better integration within uh, networks in the brain and that perhaps myelin in integrity is, is, is improved by the ketones, whether it's, it's a fuel thing. This is the other area that we looked at, which is functional connectivity in, in the brain, and the dorsal attention network is the left hand of those set of boxes, and this uh, area, area, the dorsal attention network, is associated with attention function in the brain, and uh, we see a direct relationship between the ketone uptake and the dorsal attention network, uh, which is shown in red on, on, the, on the panel on the left, and the ketone uptake in, in that network as well. So this is the fifth cognitive domain, which is improved by ketogenic MCT in mild cognitive impairment. And it seems to be, again, directly related to the availability of ketones, whether for structural improvement uh, in, in these areas or for as a fuel, we don't know. So it comes to the concept that we've been working here uh, on is that uh, in, in the case of Alzheimer's disease, uh, I see this as a stage-wise process in which there are pre-symptomatic metabolic problems that are specific to glucose that impact on a, a process in the brain uh, on neuropathology, on cognition, and you develop a vicious cycle. The cells start dying, the uptake of, of glucose goes down, and we believe we can break this a vicious cycle at both at, at, at the early stage in mild cognitive impairment and possibly at the later stage as well using brain energy rescue with ketones. So I, I've... Uh, thought about this, and we don't work in, in, in metabolic psychiatry yet, but we're saying to ourselves, can these methods be applied in metabolic psychiatry? And the question to me is, well, which disorders should we be looking at? Can we demonstrate whether there is a glucose-specific issue in metabolic uh, disorders of, uh, involving mental health? Are ketotherapeutics beneficial for quality of life, and, and do they actually change brain energetics, there, we've heard about different approaches to looking at brain energetics, and, and we would suggest that the ketone PET imaging could be beneficial to really directly attack the question of, of whether ketones are playing a direct role. Is this changing functional or structural connectivity in the brain? And going forward, uh, we're gonna need a database. We've got over 400 scans in, in Alzheimer's disease and in, in mild cognitive impairment now. Um, we need to build that sort of database um, in, in mental disorders as well. And as has been discussed already here, common study protocols in which maybe one site could be in, in a place like Sherbrooke where we do the ketone PET and potentially get some metabolic insights. And finally, I think one of the challenges that I haven't heard much uh, talk about yet, if we do work with ketogenic supplements, placebos are gonna be critical. Uh, there are very few that are available. So this is something that we're gonna need to think about. Thank you very much. Thank you.